Hello everyone, I'm Rodney from 3GameMan.com and today I'm having a look at a very affordable power supply from EVGA. It is their 700B. Now they also have a 500B and a 600B. These are bronze certified power supplies that offer great features and come with a three-year warranty. They are extremely popular and really they have a winning combination, right, of performance and price. So let's see what this model can do. Despite the fact that this is a budget product, the box looks awesome with pictures as well as features and specifications about the product on it. Included is a user's manual and on the right side they include a power cord and in this bag they have a jumper as well as four black screws and the power supply which is in this bubble wrap bag. Now right off the top I'm going to tell you and if you're familiar already with the 500B and 600B you know this but there's nothing really super spectacular or unique about this power supply however most are just looking for a great power supply at an excellent price and that's really what sets it apart. Okay so hang on to something because I'm going to talk rails and those of you who have heard this before just bear with me here. Rails are basically well regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. Now in this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 150 watts and the 12 volt is 672 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. Now the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. It's also important to know the peak amps on each rail. Well in this particular case the 3.3 volt is 20 amps and the 5 volt is 24 amps and it has a single plus 12 volt rail which is 56 amps. Okay so moving right along now one thing that you don't want to do is get a power supply that's cheap but hold on a second here you can get the 500B and the 600B for a steal and even the 700B is very affordable so I'm going to use the affordable word and not cheap. By cheap, I mean something that's not brand name and something that's going to fail and mess up your computer system. This is one of the most important components in your system. Okay, so now that you know not to get a cheap non-brand name power supply, there are a few things to remember when selecting one. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require. There's no point in getting a power supply like for example that's 700 watts if all you need is a power supply that's 500 watts. Generally speaking though a medium to high end gaming rig will require a 500 to a 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If however you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second it should be at or above 80% efficiency and this power supply's efficiency is 85% under typical loads. Third it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth choose a power supply that has APFC, APFC or active power factor correction assist the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC FC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD+, NVIDIA SLI, and AMD Crossfire, and many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. Now, this power supply meets the AD+, bronze certification, which really isn't anything to brag about, but you know, will be more than fine for most. Sixth, and I typically recommend this, get a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. Now unfortunately, this power supply doesn't. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider one that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside of the case. Also, it is extremely important to get a power supply with an excellent warranty, and this power supply comes with a three-year warranty. This is a 
pretty sexy looking power supply, right? A spiffy fan grill, comes with a quiet 120 millimeter fan, their logo here, lots of ventilation. Here's where the power cord gets connected and thankfully they include a power switch. Now obviously this power supply isn't modular, but they've done a decent job on the sleeving and note where it goes into the power supply. They have plastic here so you don't have to worry about the cables being chafed. Finally, have a listen to the 120 millimeter fan. I believe EVGA has another hit on their hands. The 500B and the 600B power supplies went over very well. This one offers decent performance all around. I mean, this is, like I said, not spectacular, nothing really unique about this power supply, but it does what it's supposed to do and offer really good power at a very, very affordable price. So all things considered, this is a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. Well, that's it, but I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you think this and other videos that I produce are great, please like them and subscribe to the channel. Also, your comments are very welcome. And if you have any questions, let me know.